Next month, clear out your office. When my dad gets out of rehab, he's moving in here. His words hit me like a truck. Are you seriously doing this without asking me? I managed, feeling my world tilt on its axis. Ethan didn't even look up from his phone. He's my dad, Jess. He doesn't have anywhere else to go. I felt the walls closing in. We barely have enough room as it is. I glanced down the hall, where our teenage daughter Lily and our younger son Toby would be in their rooms, oblivious to this sudden storm. Ethan shrugged. He can take your office. You can work from the kitchen table or something. I swallowed hard, trying to keep my voice steady. My office is where I work. My income sustains this family. You know that. Don't make a big deal out of it, Jess, Ethan said flatly, finally meeting my eyes. His expression was cold, detached. I stood there, rooted to the spot, as he walked away. The man I married, who used to be my biggest supporter, was now dismantling my life with casual indifference. I turned back to the stovetop. The dinner I was making suddenly seemed so trivial. Quiet footsteps approached. Mom, everything okay? Lily asked softly. I smiled weakly at her. Just a grown-up conversation, sweetie. But Lily wasn't fooled. At fifteen, she understood more than I wanted her to. Dad's moving Grandpa in, isn't he? The dismay in her voice mirrored my own. Yeah, looks like it, I sighed, stirring the pasta with renewed agitation. Lily's eyes darkened. Can't Grandpa go anywhere else? No, apparently not. I tried to keep the bitterness out of my tone, but I wasn't very successful. Toby wandered in, looking between us curiously. Are we having spaghetti tonight? His innocent interruption was a welcome change of topic. Yes, we are, I said, forcing a smile. Go wash up. Dinner's almost ready. As I watched Toby scurry off, I wondered how he would handle the arrival of his grandfather. George Harper was not an easy man to live with, especially for a boy as sensitive as Toby. Lily and Toby didn't need more tension in their lives, and neither did I. Ethan's voice broke through my thoughts again, calling from the other room. Jessica, where's the insurance paperwork? In the filing cabinet, I called back, my hands gripping the sides of the sink until my knuckles turned white. It wasn't just the immediate impact of George moving in. It was the years of Ethan slowly growing more distant, more absorbed in himself and his father, that stung the most. Dinner was a subdued affair. Ethan was engrossed in his phone, Toby rattled on about his science project, and Lily ate in silence, her eyes flicking to mine every so often. Only the clinking of cutlery filled the room. After dinner, I escaped to my office, the room that would soon be George's. Staring at the neatly lined shelves and my meticulously arranged desk, I felt a sudden surge of anger. How dare Ethan make such a monumental decision without considering the impact on our family? I had sacrificed so much, worked so hard to build a career while managing our home, and now this. Ethan poked his head into the office. Jessica, we need to figure out the logistics for Dad's move. I stared at him, feeling the weight of all the unspoken words between us. Ethan, this isn't just about the logistics. We need to talk. But he wasn't listening. He never listened. Just let me know when you've figured it out, he said, disappearing down the hall. I sat down heavily at my desk, a sense of resolution settling over me. Something needed to change. This wasn't the life I had envisioned for myself or my children. If Ethan wouldn't see reason, maybe it was time I took matters into my own hands. The alarm blared at 6 a.m. sharp. I dragged myself out of bed, feeling the weight of yet another exhausting day ahead. I peeked into the kids' rooms to make sure they were waking up. Toby was already up, working on his science project. Lily was half buried under her covers, grumbling at her alarm clock. Rise and shine, I said, giving her a gentle shake. She groaned, but sat up rubbing her eyes. Downstairs, I started breakfast while checking email on my phone. Balancing a demanding job and household was a juggling act. As I poured cereal for Toby and packed lunch for Lily, I glanced at the list of tasks waiting for me at work. The new project deadline loomed, and there was no room for error. Ethan wandered into the kitchen, looking like he had slept just fine. Morning, he mumbled, grabbing a coffee cup. Morning, I replied coolly, avoiding eye contact. The tension from last night still hung in the air. Mom, can you drop me off early today? Lily asked, shoulders slumped. I need to go to the library before class. Sure thing. I kissed the top of her head. Ethan looked up from his coffee. Don't forget, my dad's coming over today to check out the house. I bit back a retort. 
I didn't forget. The drive to school was quiet, Lily staring out the window. Suddenly, she spoke. Mom, do we have to let Grandpa move in? I took a deep breath. Your dad's decided and we have to make the best of it, I said, even though every word felt like a lie. At work, I threw myself into my tasks. My team was depending on me to lead the project to success. Between emails, meetings, and coding, the hours flew by. Still, the thought of George moving in nagged at the back of my mind. Back at home, Ethan was sitting with his father at the kitchen table when I returned. George looked every bit the imposing figure I remembered, eyes sharp and unforgiving, a sneer glued to his face. Ethan, George said with a gravelly voice, this house might be too small for comfort. Are you sure it's the best decision? My office will be your room, I interjected, forcing a polite smile. We'll manage. George's eyes flicked over me dismissively. We'll see. Ethan's phone buzzed. I've got to take this, he said, leaving me alone with George. Great. George leaned back, crossing his arms. Jessica, you need to understand something. If I move in here, things will have to change. I have certain standards. I clenched my fists under the table. We're doing our best, George. This isn't easy for any of us, he smirked. Especially not for you, I imagine. I stood, unable to stomach more. I need to check on dinner. As I stirred the soup, I overheard Ethan and George's conversation. George was instructing Ethan on firms to invest in and ways to manage family more effectively. It was clear George still saw me as an outsider, a burden. The anger building inside me was a runaway train. Later that evening, I sat on the edge of Lily's bed, helping her with algebra. Toby was in his room, his quiet focus a welcome change from the chaos downstairs. Mom, Lily said softly, you don't look happy. I looked into her concerned eyes. I'm fine, honey. Just tired. Is it because of Grandpa? Let's just focus on your homework, I whispered, pulling her into a hug. This wasn't just about me anymore. The kids needed stability, and I had to find a way to provide that. Lily sighed, resting her head on my shoulder. We'll be okay, right? I nodded, though I wasn't so sure myself. Yes, we will. I promise. As I turned out the light and walked to my room, the resolve crystallized within me. Yes, that. I couldn't let George and Ethan's decisions destroy the home I'd fought so hard to build. Something had to change. And it would. Ethan's voice thundered through the living room as I returned from dropping the kids off at school. Jessica, we need to talk. Now. I walked in, trying to remain calm. What's wrong? He shoved a stack of papers toward me. Care to explain these? They were bank statements showing numerous charges to a credit card I didn't even know existed. Casino expenses, high-end restaurants, purchases far beyond our budget. Ethan, where did this card come from? I asked, equal parts shocked and angry. His face turned red. That's not the point. Why are you snooping through our financials? Why didn't you tell me about this? I shot back. You're hemorrhaging money we don't have. George ambled into the room, looking amused. Is there a problem, Jessica? You seem upset. I'm upset because as your son has been hiding our financial ruin, I said, my voice tight. George chuckled darkly. Oh, Ethan's always been a bit reckless with money. You should have kept a closer eye on him. Ethan stood there, defiant. It's under control. I just need some time. Time, I exclaimed. We're drowning in debt, and you think you just need time? George raised an eyebrow. Calm down, Jessica. This is Ethan's house. He'll sort it out. I stared at Ethan. We've been barely managing, and you're gambling away our future? And don't even think about moving your dad in here with everything going on. Ethan folded his arms. I'm not changing my plans, Jess. Dad's moving in, and that's final. I took a deep breath, turning on my heel. This conversation isn't over. In my office, I began researching our finances more deeply, uncovering even more hidden debts. Ethan wasn't just reckless. He was selfishly dragging the family down with him. The conviction to protect my children and myself solidified within me. I had been blind, but now I saw clearly. Ethan was jeopardizing everything for his own addictions. Later that night, I cornered Ethan in the kitchen. We need to talk. He sighed. If it's about the money, I told you, I'll handle it. No, you won't. I said firmly, I've been covering household expenses alone for years. You've been using your salary for gambling. This stops now. Ethan looked at me with fury in his eyes. What do you plan to do about it, Jess? We need to separate our finances. I'm securing my income and ensuring the kids are taken care of. Ethan laughed bitterly. 
You think you can just walk away from your responsibilities? I stepped closer, looking him straight in the eyes. No, I'm walking away from your irresponsibility. He grabbed my arm, squeezing harder than necessary. You're not going anywhere. I yanked my arm free. We've been over this. I'm done covering for you. Ethan stormed out, and I went to find Haley. She was the only person who could help me navigate this mess. When I told her everything, her reaction was immediate and supportive. Jess, you need to protect yourself and the kids. This is serious, she said, her voice filled with concern. I know. Can you recommend a good attorney? I asked, my mind already forming a plan. I'll get you the best, Haley said without hesitation. You need to document everything and start moving assets to your name. We can do this. The following days, I quietly began my preparations. I consulted a lawyer, gathered financial documents, and discreetly started moving essential items to a friend's place. Ethan was too wrapped up in his own world to notice. One evening, as I was going through more records, I found a receipt for an expensive watch. It was dated just a week before George was supposed to move in. Rage bubbled inside me. Ethan had no regard for the sacrifices I made daily. Lily walked in, saw my face, and asked, "'Mom, is everything okay?' I forced a smile. "'Just sorting out some things, sweetie.' She frowned. "'Are you and Dad going to be okay?' I hugged her tight. "'We will be, I promise.' As I tucked her in that night, I realized how much my children relied on me for stability. They didn't deserve any of this chaos. I kissed her forehead, determined to turn the tide. Ethan and George had underestimated me. With Haley's help and a solid legal plan in place, I knew one thing for certain— I would take back control and ensure my family's future stayed secure, no matter what it took. Jessica, come into the living room, Ethan called out. His voice was harder than usual. I entered to find Ethan and George sitting together, both with smug looks on their faces. Yes, I asked, keeping my tone neutral. Dad and I have been planning. We need to get the downstairs bedroom ready for his move, Ethan said, leaning back like he owned the place. Already on it, I replied curtly. George snorted. You'd better hurry. I need a comfortable space. I nodded, keeping the fury in check. Understood. Later, I texted Haley. Need to move some things tonight? Meet me at the condo? She replied instantly. Absolutely. I'll be there at eight. That evening, I began moving boxes discreetly to the garage. When Ethan called out from the living room, I said, just organizing some stuff, getting ready for George. In reality, I was moving essential items, including personal documents and the kids' important things, into the car without Ethan noticing. Every item I moved felt like lifting a weight off my chest. At 8 p.m., I met Haley at the condo. How did you manage to get this place so fast? She asked, helping me carry boxes in. The landlord is a friend, said they'd hold it for me, no questions asked, I said, smiling for the first time in days. How long can you stay? Haley looked at me sternly. As long as you need. We're not rushing this. I sighed in relief. Thanks, Haley. I don't know what I'd do without you. She smiled. You'd find a way. You always do. Back home, Ethan seemed oblivious. He was too busy planning his father's arrival. Every conversation they had, every mock reminder that I was just a passenger in this journey, only strengthened my resolve. But another week passed, and Ethan was still in the dark. I had successfully moved most sentimental belongings and essentials. It was time to set the legal wheels in motion. My lawyer, a no-nonsense woman named Clara, was excellent. You've done the hard part, Jessica. Now we need to make sure everything's airtight before you make the final move. I can't thank you enough, Clara, I said, the weight of my plan finally lifting slightly. Just remember, she replied, Va, this is about more than money. It's about your sanity, your kids' futures. That night, I found Ethan working furiously on his laptop. What are you doing, I asked. Handling our finances, Jess. Don't worry. I observed silently, knowing exactly what he was doing. He was trying to plug holes in a sinking ship. Little did he know I had already secured the lifeboats. George walked in, heading straight for the fridge. Still don't have that room ready, Jess? He called out. Almost done. I answered, feigning cheerfulness. Ethan glanced at me. You need to make sure it's all set for Dad. You've been dragging your feet. I forced a smile. It'll be done, don't worry. I went upstairs, finding Lily on her laptop. Hey, sweetie, how's homework? She looked up, stress lines on her young face. Okay, Mom, just a lot to do. I sat beside her. You're handling it well. You'll get through this. 
Lily hesitated. Mom, is Dad okay? He seems different. I hugged her. We're going to be fine. Just trust me. The night before the big move, I double-checked everything in the garage. Haley helped load the last of the boxes into the car. This is it, Jess, she said. Ready? I nodded, nerves and determination blending inside me. Ready. As I drove back home, I could feel a shift. I was no longer a passive participant in my life. I was taking control, crafting a safer, healthier environment for my children and myself. The next morning, Ethan and George left early to run errands. I wasted no time. Every move was swift, calculated. Furniture, clothes, keepsakes, everything we needed was pulled from the dark cloud we'd been living under. With the last box loaded, I stood in what used to be the family living room. It felt emptier, both literally and emotionally. A final glance around and I left, locking the door behind me. As I drove away, a sense of calm washed over me. I hadn't just left a house. I had left years of manipulation and toxicity. Now it was only a matter of making it official. That evening, the kids and I settled into the condo. Lily and Toby adjusted quickly. The space felt lighter, safer. And for the first time in ages, I breathed freely. Ethan's call came late in the night. Jess, what the hell is going on here? The house is empty. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of the final moment. I did what you asked, Ethan. I cleared everything out. Enjoy living with your dad. Silence hung on the line, and I could almost hear his jaw drop. We'll talk about this, he finally said, his voice shaking. There's nothing left to talk about. We're done, I said, hanging up and shutting off my phone. This was just the beginning. Ethan showed up at the condo the next morning, banging on the door. I opened it slowly, greeting him with a steely gaze. Jessica, what have you done? He fumed, eyes wild with anger. I've made sure our kids and I have a safe place to live, I responded calmly, stepping outside to prevent him from causing a scene in front of Lily and Toby. He tried to push past me, but I stood firm. You're not coming in, Ethan. His expression grew darker. You can't just run away with the kids. This is kidnapping. No, Ethan. This is protection, I said, straightforwardly. You've left me no choice. He took a step closer, invading my space. You think you can take everything from me? My house? My kids? Your decisions brought us here. Go home, Ethan. The house is still yours. You can live there with George. He scoffed. You won't get away with this. That's where you're wrong, I asserted, closing the door. Inside, the kids were waiting anxiously. Lily looked up, her eyes wide. Mom, it's okay, I assured them. Everything's going to be fine now. Days passed in a relative calm, but I knew the storm wasn't over. Ethan's next move came swiftly. A court summons. He was contesting custody. At the lawyer's office, Clara skimmed the documents. He's claiming you're unfit, says you kidnapped the kids. I felt a surge of anger. How can he say that? I've done everything to keep them safe. He's desperate, Clara noted. We'll prove the truth, stick to the facts, and let him show his true colors. In court, Ethan played the concerned father, but his facade began to crack under our evidence, proof of his neglect, financial irresponsibility, and gambling habits. My detailed documentation and the calculated plan were working. After a grueling session, the judge finally spoke. Until a full investigation, custody remains with the mother. Mr. Harper is granted supervised visitation. Relief washed over me. Ethan glared, seething. This isn't over. We'll see, I said, walking out with Clara. On our way home, I thanked Clara. I couldn't have done this without you. Remember, Jess, she said. This is just the beginning. Stay strong. At the condo, the kids were waiting. What happened? Toby asked nervously. We're staying here for now, I said, hugging them both. You're safe. That's all that matters. Weeks turned into months. Ethan's supervised visits were a roller coaster, always trying to manipulate and bully his way back into control. But with each passing visit, his true nature surfaced more blatantly, reinforcing the court's decision to keep the kids with me. One evening, as I was planning the next steps with Haley, Ethan called. We need to talk, Jess. Can you meet me? I hesitated but agreed, choosing a public place for safety. At the cafe, he was already seated, looking haggard. Jess, we can make this work, he began, a hint of desperation in his tone. It's too late for that, Ethan, I replied, keeping my voice steady. You need help. This isn't about us anymore. He leaned forward, eyes cold. If you don't compromise, I'll make sure you regret it. I sighed, standing up. I've already made my choice, and it's the right one for our kids. 
As I walked away, the weight of the confrontation lifted. For the first time in a long time, I felt free. Back at the condo, I hugged Lily and Toby tighter than ever. You both have been so strong. We're going to be okay, I reassured them. Their smiles were all I needed to keep fighting. Ethan had tried every trick in his book, and it had only made my resolve stronger. We had a new beginning, and nothing he could do would change that. Haley came over later that evening. How did it go? It's done, I said, feeling lighter. He's out of tricks, she smiled. You did it, Jess. We clinked our glasses together. To new beginnings, she toasted. To new beginnings, I echoed, finally at peace. I can't believe you think you're going to get away with this, Jess, Ethan's voice snarled through the phone. This isn't over. I held the phone tightly. Ethan, I've taken steps to protect our family. It's time for you to take responsibility for your actions. He chuckled darkly. Don't act like you're the hero here. You're just running away. His words no longer shook me. Call it what you want, Ethan. We're done. Hanging up, I sighed and started packing the kids' lunches. It was just another day of work, school, and trying to keep everything together. At the office, my boss called me in for a meeting. Jessica, your performance has been exceptional, considering everything you're going through. Thank you, I said, appreciating the acknowledgement but wary of what's coming next. We're putting you up for a promotion, senior project manager. I was stunned. I don't know what to say. Say yes, he said with a smile. You deserve it. As the day continued, Haley messaged me. Meet me tonight. We need to finalize the move. After work, I picked up the kids and explained the plan. We're making the final move to our new place tonight. We'll sleep there from now on. Lily hugged me. Really? No more back and forth? Really, I confirmed. At the condo, Haley was already moving the last few boxes. Hey, how's it going? I smiled. Lily and Toby are excited to settle in. You deserve this, Jess. Don't let him get into your head. The evening was a whirlwind of arranging furniture, unpacking clothes, and making the space truly ours. As I tucked the kids into bed, I felt a sense of peace washing over me. Later, Haley and I sat down with a cup of tea. I heard from Clara today. The court date's set for next month. How did Ethan take it? she asked. As expected. Not well, I said, rolling my eyes. But we're prepared. Haley put a hand on my shoulder. You've got this. You're stronger than you know. Finally, alone in my room, I allowed myself a moment to breathe. I had done it. We were in a safe place. The uncertainties of the future still loomed, but for now we were okay. The next morning, Ethan showed up at the condo, fuming. Jessica, what did you think you were doing? Ethan, we've discussed this. The kids and I are moving forward. He stepped closer, eyes blazing. You can't just erase me from their lives. They deserve a stable environment, I said firmly, something you couldn't provide. He laughed bitterly. You think you're so noble? You're breaking this family apart. I held my ground. You did that long before I made any moves, Ethan. You're going to regret this, he spat, turning and leaving. With Ethan gone, the weight lifted slightly. I knew the battle wasn't over, but for the first time, I felt confident it was one I could win. That evening, I prepared dinner with Lily and Toby bustling around me. As we gathered around the table, the atmosphere was lighter, filled with hope and promise. Days turned into weeks and our new routine began to feel natural. Ethan's visits remained supervised and strained, his attempts to regain control faltering at every turn. Finally, the night before our court date, Ethan called once more. Jessica, you're making a big mistake. No, Ethan, I replied, steady and sure. I'm fixing your mistakes. The court day arrived, filled with tension and anticipation. Ethan arrived with his lawyer, both looking grim. Clara was by my side, unwavering. As proceedings began, Ethan's true nature revealed itself under scrutiny. Financial records, witness statements, even Ethan's attitude during supervised visits painted a clear picture. The judge's decision was swift and just. Primary custody awarded to me, with Ethan's visitation rights strictly monitored. Ethan glared across the courtroom, defeated. You'll regret this, Jess. I met his gaze, unflinching. No, Ethan. I finally feel free. Leaving the courthouse, Clara turned to me. You did it, Jess. I couldn't have done it without all of you, I replied, gratitude overwhelming me. Back at the condo, we celebrated quietly. The kids were thrilled, Haley was beaming, and I felt a peace I hadn't known in years. Lily hugged me tight. We're gonna be okay, right, Mom? I smiled down at her. Yes, Lily. 
we're going to be more than okay. Finally, I had taken control. Ethan was out of our lives and only good things lay ahead. Together, we would rebuild and create a life defined by love, strength, and resilience. Ethan showed up at the condo once more, his face a mask of frustration. I opened the door just a crack, leaving the chain in place. What now, Ethan? I asked, my voice devoid of patience. You think you've won, don't you? This custody ruling is just temporary. I'm going to fight this. You won't keep them from me, he spat, fists clenched. I remained calm. For now, it's the court's decision. Focus on getting yourself together. Ethan narrowed his eyes. You think you're so much better, don't you? I think our children deserve a stable life, I said firmly. Something I'm providing. He sneered. We'll see how long that lasts. I closed the door, locking it behind me as I let out a breath. His threats were losing their impact. The court's ruling had given me a newfound confidence. Later that day, Haley dropped by. How did the visit go? She asked, eyeing my tense shoulders. He's still determined to fight, I replied, sinking onto the couch. But I'm not backing down. Haley nodded approvingly. That's the spirit. You've come too far to let him drag you back. In the following days, Ethan's attempts to intimidate me continued. He'd show up unannounced, call at odd hours, and send texts filled with threats and insults. One morning, as I was dropping the kids off at school, Ethan approached us. We need to talk, he said, his tone too calm to be genuine. Lily clung to my arm. Mom, don't leave us. It's okay, Lily. Go inside. I'll be right here, I reassured her, keeping my gaze on Ethan. Once they disappeared into the school, I turned to Ethan. What do you want? You're punishing me, he said, his veneer of calm cracking. I want to see my children without restrictions. You need help, Ethan, until you get it. These restrictions stay. You can't do this to me, he insisted, desperation creeping into his voice. I didn't do this. You did. I walked away, not waiting for his response. At work, the promotion news spread. My colleagues congratulated me, the office buzz filled with positivity. Even as I immersed myself in new responsibilities, Ethan's dark shadow loomed ever-present in my mind. One evening, the kids and I were having dinner when my phone buzzed with a call from George. Hesitation gripped me, but I answered. Jessica, George's rough voice came through. You need to back off. Ethan's suffering because of you. George, Ethan's suffering is his own doing, I replied calmly. He needs to face his consequences. Don't get righteous with me, George growled. This isn't over. It is for us, I said, hanging up. The atmosphere at home lightened, the condo becoming a sanctuary. Lily and Toby adjusted well, their laughter filling the spaces once dominated by tension. One evening, as I tucked Toby into bed, he asked, Mom, are we really safe now? Yes, Toby, we're safe, I assured him, kissing his forehead. The next day, Clara called with an update. Ethan's lawyer has filed for an appeal, she said, keeping her tone professional. Of course he has, I muttered. What's our next step? We fight it with everything we've got, Clara replied. Gather more evidence, more testimonies. We'll prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Days turned into weeks, and Hannah's support became a lifeline. She joined me in late-night planning sessions, going over every detail to ensure we were prepared for the court battle ahead. One evening, Haley brought over Chinese takeout. You're holding up pretty well, she remarked, handing me a container. Just doing what I have to. I replied, digging in. Ethan's pushing harder, but so am I. Haley's eyes sparkled with admiration. You're stronger than ever, Jess. As we ate, I felt a surge of determination. Ethan's threats, George's interference, none of it could shake my resolve. My children deserved a life free from chaos, and I would give it to them. Finally, the day of the appeal arrived. The tension in the courtroom was palpable as Ethan and I faced each other. He looked worn, his bravado thin. Clara leaned in, whispering, Remember, stick to the facts. Let the evidence speak. Ethan's lawyer presented his case, but the judge's demeanor remained unreadable. When it was our turn, Clara methodically dismantled every point of the spread risk, presenting solid evidence of Ethan's instability and neglect. The judge deliberated, a hush falling over the room. Finally, she spoke. The custody arrangement remains as is. Mr. Harper's visitation rights will continue to be supervised. Ethan exploded. This is unfair. She's poisoning them against me. The judge's gavel slammed down. Enough, Mr. Harper. This decision is final. Get your life in order. Leaving the courtroom, I allowed myself a moment of relief. Clara patted my back. You did it, Jess. 
On the drive home, my phone buzzed with a message from Ethan. This isn't over. I deleted the message, focusing on the road ahead. I had won another battle, but the war wasn't over. Yet, as I walked into the condo and saw Lily and Toby's smiling faces, I knew one thing. I would fight until our future was secure. And in that moment I felt a strength I hadn't known before. Ethan's threats had become a dull roar in the background of my life. The kids and I had settled into a routine that brought a sense of normalcy, something we hadn't had in years. One evening as we were finishing dinner, there was a knock at the door. My heart skipped a beat, but when I opened it, it was a stranger holding a stack of papers. "'Jessica Harper?' he asked. I nodded, bracing myself. "'You've been served,' he said, handing me the documents before turning on his heel. I closed the door, staring at the papers. It was yet another legal challenge from Ethan, seeking to overturn the custody ruling. Lily and Toby watched me with wide eyes, sensing the tension. "'Mom, is everything okay?' Toby asked. I forced a smile. "'Just some paperwork I need to look at. Nothing to worry about.' I called Clara immediately. "'Ethan's filed again. It never stops.' Bring the papers to my office tomorrow, she replied. We'll handle this. The next morning, I sat across from Clara as she reviewed the documents. He's desperate, Clara remarked, shaking her head. He knows he's losing. What's our next step, I asked. We continue as planned. His pattern of behavior will work against him, she said confidently. Back home, I focused on making life as normal as possible for the kids. We went to the park, worked on school projects, and enjoyed movie nights. For their sake, I had to remain strong. Days later, Ethan called during one of the supervised visits. I can't believe you're still fighting me on this. You're brainwashing our kids. I'm protecting them, Ethan, I replied calmly. This has always been about their safety, he scoffed. You're delusional. They need their father. They need stability, I countered, something you've repeatedly failed to provide. The visit ended, and I took Lily and Toby home. They sensed the tension but didn't press for details. Instead, we focused on each other, creating a haven of love and support. Another month passed, filled with legal preparations and court dates. I had to balance my work life with the ongoing battle, but the promotion had given me the flexibility and financial security I needed. My boss had been incredibly supportive, understanding the gravity of my situation. One evening, after another grueling day in court, Haley and I sat on the condo's balcony, watching the kids play below. "'You've come so far,' Haley remarked. "'Ethan's losing grip, and he knows it.' "'I just want it all to be over,' I sighed. "'I want a final, undeniable victory.' "'It's close,' she assured me. "'Just hold on a little longer.' The final court decision loomed, and every day felt like walking on thin ice. Ethan's repeated legal assaults were wearing me down, but I couldn't let him win, not when we were so close." On the final day in court, Clara presented our case with the precision of a seasoned warrior. The judge listened intently, his gaze shifting between us and Ethan, who seemed to wilt under the scrutiny. When the judge finally spoke, his words brought a clarity and relief that I hadn't felt in years. Full custody granted to the mother, Jessica Harper. Mr. Harper's visitation will remain supervised. Ethan erupted. This is a travesty. She's lied about everything. Enough, Mr. Harper the judge said firmly. Consider this a chance for self-improvement. Ethan stormed out of the courtroom, his threats echoing long after he was gone. I stood there, taking in the gravity of the moment. It was over. We had won. Clara smiled, shaking my hand. Congratulations, Jess. You did it. Back at the condo, I shared the news with the kids. We've won. The court decided we stay together here, where it's safe. Tears of joy filled Lily's eyes. Really, Mom? We don't have to worry anymore? Really? I confirmed, hugging them tight. We're free. That night, we celebrated with pizza and ice cream, the weight of the past few years lifting off our shoulders. In the days that followed, our lives began to blossom. The condo felt lighter, filled with laughter and hope. Ethan's ghost still lingered in voicemails and empty threats, but his power over us had vanished. One evening, as we sat on the balcony watching the sunset, Lily turned to me. Mom, we're going to be okay, aren't we? I kissed her forehead, feeling the truth of my words. Yes, Lily, we're going to be just fine. With Ethan's grip broken and a new chapter ahead, I felt a strength that came from deep within. We had faced the storm and emerged stronger. Together, we would create a life defined not by the shadows of our past, but by the brightness of our future.